fingers you have used to dial are too fat. Some say Mario Kart's never been better since Double Dash. The two characters per cart, loose sliding and character special weapons, still make Double Dash unique. Unique being a word not typically associated with the Mario Kart series. Double Dash's course selection is arguably Mario Kart's strongest, so ranking them proves extremely difficult. More so with the fact that I'm playing all the courses on single player, so I'm mostly not being challenged. Though actual players are now so bad. That's besides the point. The courses rank by how much I enjoy them rather than the level design because Baby Park has the worst Oh god there's a pitchforks Music tracks repeat across certain levels so sound isn't a rank factor Without further ado, the worst double dash track in my opinion is Baby Park Just kidding, it's Mushroom City Mushroom City is one of four levels in Double Dash that is yet to appear in another Mario Kart game, and the only one which would need a major facelift. Ironically, I loved it as a kid, probably because of the traffic and areas to explore which lead nowhere. The major highlight is the two sets of crossroads, but its only difference is the direction traffic is heading. In between crossroads is a star road and red carpet that looks like an inviting shortcut, but given the narrow twisting path, is really a long cut since you're sliding and banging off the walls. The nighttime star metropolitan area with its neon signs along with a variety of traffic danger creates the mood of a hustling and bustling city but over relying on traffic as obstacles rather than memorable track design is a big no-no. The roads are flatter than Peach's vocabulary with no hairpin turns to test the driver's handling. It has an interesting premise at least, which makes it worth playing. It is also the best worst level from any Mario Kart game, if that makes sense. Number 15, Luigi Circuit. Luigi Circuit's background displays the Mushroom Kingdom's green pastures in all their glory. Double Dash's first course is a simple twisty stretchy oval. The straight parts two lanes join as one meaning incoming carts receive bombardment and offer potential comebacks. An easily dodgeable chain chomp pathetically guards the first corner. The curves of the oval have boost pads on the walls providing the illusion of being a faster path. Unlike Mario Kart circuits from other titles, Luigi circuit ends quickly before it wears thin. Number 14, Baby Park. If this video gets views, I'm gonna get pelted for choosing a low spot for the fan favorite but it's never been my favourite, it's just a no frills, easy design of a small oval. What sets Baby Park apart is the 7 laps, crazy music and crazy carnage, especially with crazy friends. Peanut Park's roller coaster in the background shows how mad it is. Like Luigi's Circuit, weapons can easily blast on the opposite side of the track, meaning no one's safe. And if you're bad at the game, you'll receive the ultimate humiliation through overlapping. Despite having more than double the laps of every other track, Baby Park finishes the fastest and doesn't overstay its welcome, unless your posse selects it over and over, which they will. Number 13, Peach Beach. This oval has two faces. The left side is a cobbled path surrounded by palm tree faces leading to Defino Beach. It's the first course to present the warp pipe long cut for the twin item box. Like Peach, her beach is the prettiest, until Rosalina came along, hoo boy! But on the left side, beauty is only skin deep since there are no obstacles to break up the straight path. They're all on the beach! When the tide is out, the catacocks flip you about. When the tide is in, boost the shortcut to win. Like this course, my opinion splits. The left may be burr, but the course ends quick to be fair. If the left was as creative as the right, Peach Beach could be a shoe in for the top rank. That is my poem for my valentine if I ever have one. Number 12, Daisy Cruiser. When I was a sprocket, this would have been in my top five, but now it's in the bottom five. I forgot how much Retro Studios ruined, I mean expand Daisy Cruiser and Mario Kart 7. As I drowned in the pool, I expected the breaststroke through. Drift around the pool, down the steps, through the hall of haunted tables and fall through the trap door. Or drive past it if you're boring. Remember to smack your head off the rubber rings before the finish line. Like Daisy, her cruiser is pretty, not as pretty as Peach, but me. Eh. Second place isn't too bad. It certainly displays the wealth of the Toadstool sisters, making the billionaire's yachts look like toy boats in comparison. One of the more creative tracks, but focuses more on replicating a cruiser rather than creating a challenging race course. Number 11, Sherbert Land. 
Sherbert Land is one of the worst courses in Mario Kart history, according to a lot of yokes on lane. But what do they know? The major criticism is the lack of cart control on the ice, so of course I like it. Clearly these city slinkers never drive on an actual vehicle, because on actual ice you'd have a real toward time. Sure the cart slips a little, but it's on ice, that's what's supposed to happen. And it's nothing you can't correct with a little forward planning, just like actual driving. You start on an outside ice rink and enter a small icy cavern of a few bends. The skating shy guys are another player complaint, but honestly they're easy to avoid. Outside you reach snow with a few more bends before it's back on the ice, avoiding large shards which freeze carts for a few seconds. This part is bends too, but the best thing is to be boring and stick to the middle and you usually come out unscathed towards the finish line. Without factoring in the ice, the course design would be bland, instead it's visually one of the standout tracks, but a bit too simple in my taste. We reach the top 10. Number 10. Mario Circuit and despite the name, this circuit's got a bit of personality. The first half is a normal road, which corners as expected. Like Luigi, Mario's got his own useless pep chain chomp, adding a splattering of piranha plants in the second half when the road turns into a more appealing sand trail. The track finishes with Goombas waddling between motocross bumps. The hump at the end is my favourite part of two sneaky piranhas waiting for an unlucky player who dares not drive perfectly down the middle. Mario Circuit doesn't win many players' favourite course, but it's it's alright. If Luigi's course shows the Mushroom Kingdom in the distance, Mario's is a tour of the complex, displaying different sides of the castle while exploring the surrounding garden. That's before Peach upgrades to Peach Gardens, which is a game for another video I'll probably never make. Number 9. Dino Dino Jungle. Another one I would have had higher on the list back in my younger days. Jurassic Park has two shortcuts like Mushroom Bridge that I'll get to later. After driving past those dino feet, there's three bridges. The shortest one on the right has the narrow path of the bus pad at the end to help kick you off. If you time your drift right, it's the fastest way, risk and reward. The longest bridge has dual item boxes for those who need help. Straight after is a ramp that needs a mushroom. Else avoid eruptions of water, which is a more interesting route. Easily drive past the dino's head, turn and avoid more water eruptions near the finish line. Again, once you master it, it's pretty easy. I would have preferred it to be a lot more challenging. Number 8. Yoshi Circuit who knew making a course in the shape of Yoshi would work so well? There's corners galore and hairpin bends that are perfect for snaking. Green lush pastures, god how many times I'm going to say that line, of Yoshi's skin surround the track. Guess Mario was feeling pretty cavorious that day. Aside from having a short tunnel for a bend on a ledge of two shortcuts, there's not much else to say. It's a standard race track that's well designed. There's no gimmicks or obstacles to avoid aside from a few easy piranha plants. The focus is on pure racing and your skill behind the wheel. Lucky number 7. Mushroom Bridge Mushroom Bridge is more interesting than its city counterpart. Driving a daytime scenic route is much more appealing than driving New York at night, despite what Marvel thinks. While both involve dodging traffic, Bridge has more strings to its bow. There's two shortcuts and a warp pipe long cut. The first shortcut requires a boost up a small slope. Boost buggies are sometimes nearby, so slam one at the right time for a mushroom. The second shortcut is more tricky but more satisfying. Drive up either side of the end bridge's ledges covered by boost pads. It's risky, but if you can pull it off, it'll keep you ahead of the pack, rocketing you up the rankings. Not really, but it feels that way. Mario Kart courses need more risky plays like this. Number 6. Bowser's Castle Bowser's castle leaves little room for error. The entrance of Bowser's big gob extends to a long narrow hallway of thomps. Next, there's an upward spiral leading to the old school slow rotating fireballs. A few slopes and turns later and you'll be back down the steps being greeted by a moving Bowser statue spitting fireballs. If you're lucky, he'll let you use the shortcut. Definitely one of the more difficult courses in the game, which is probably why it was only on GameCube. Number 5. DK Mountain. In the beginning, when you're shot out of the cannon, you can see the whole track before landing on top of DK Mountain, more like DK's inactive constipated volcano. Make your way down the rocky, hilly terrain, avoiding rolling boulders. Take a couple of tight turns and cross the swaying rope bridge towards the finish line. With so much going on, it's no wonder DK Mountain is a fan favourite. Maybe it's because I've played it so many times as a teen, but I don't enjoy it as much as I remember. Still, I acknowledge it as a well-crafted course, which is why it's in the top 5. Number 4. 
Wario's Coliseum. I honestly didn't notice the Coliseum in the background until I started scripting this video. I always had bad spatial awareness which is why they won't let me drive a van. To be fair this course should have been called Wario's Steel Cage or Wario's Hell in a Cell. Seeing as the steel cage ball stands out in the background and the main course takes place inside the cage. You race on a metal runway with plenty of corners making it appear like an actual go-kart track. That's if they didn't build the structure in the air and had massive ramps of boost pads surrounded by fireballs. Outside the cage the track appears normal but once you jump over the massive ramp there's a long spiral downwards followed by twists and turns in every direction. The final set piece is at the bottom where you can take the boost ramp over the hole or drive around it. Finally, the course returns to normal along the finish line. Wario's Coliseum is the longest track of only two laps. If outside the cage was as good as inside, this could have been a contender for the number one spot. Bizarrely, Wario Coliseum hasn't appeared outside of Double Dash, but if it does, I can see Nintendo making it better, just like the retro tracks in Mario Kart 8, or worse, if Mario Kart 7 is any indication. Number 3 Waluigi Stadium I have to give Waluigi credit, he picked some good tracks. Nintendo's take on motocross, indoor motorcycle racing on dirt hills for those in the know makes the sport fun, I mean accessible to everyone. There's plenty of bumps, ramps with boost pads and corners as you'd expect. Flame wheels and fake piranha plants spice up midway. Make no mistake, even as a cartoon motocross, this course takes time to master. One for the hardcore, not so much for the casual. There's even a live cam monitor as you can see Waluigi's big beautiful face. The tight turn at the end feels a little lackluster, perhaps because now as an adult I know to use the brakes. Perhaps now as an adult I'm playing a Mario Kart game by myself. Number 2 Rainbow Road The course that takes the longest to finish, Rainbow Road certainly doesn't drag. Unless you're waiting in the elevator which wears thin but it doesn't last too long. That aside, Rainbow Road starts strong with two hairpin turns before providing a plethora of boost pads. First on a straight, followed by an upward spiral and bendy downhill road. Then it's up the elevator, over the ledge, finishing with a downward spiral. The multicoloured vibrant course track in the distance contrasts the starry night sky and the darkly lit mushroom city below. Near the end of the track, large floating multicoloured weapons appear random but add to the spectacle so who cares. Number 1 Dry Dry Desert Why is this number 1 you're probably thinking? It's another one of the most hated tracks on the interwebs for daring to have obstacles. The gall! The gall of the developers trying to give us a challenge. Out of all 16 tracks, this one stood out to me. Dry Dry Desert is anything but barren. There's plenty of twists and tornadoes where a wrong turn will lead you out of bounds. The middle of the course has a large sand trap which forces racers around it with the last stretch being bumpy with dancing pokos of plenty. I use mushrooms over the sand which is a handy shortcut all over the course. Those are my top 16 double dash tracks seeing as there is only 16 tracks. It's a very difficult list to make. I think I made the right choices for the most part. Let me know your guys course order. Bye.